Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for your time to join this uh, webinar regarding the PD diagnostic testing and condition monitoring for power apparatus in wind farms. Um, we can start a little bit uh, introduction about uh, who we are and uh, um, where we are. So this presentation is organized by um, <clears throat> the IOT Nova Group, uh, TechMB US Corp. Um, uh, it will be presented by me, uh, Jim Guo, and uh, my colleague, Dr. Kyle Jem. And uh, both of us are located in Alfreda, Georgia, which is uh, a little bit north of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we are with the Tekken US Corp, which is the uh, uh, the corporate office in uh, in the United States. And uh, our main focus is, uh, is the PD uh, diagnostic testing services and also the uh, the support for the monitoring solutions for different uh, power apparatus in uh, all sorts of uh, applications. Um, just a brief overview of of, of the Artinova Group. Uh, Artinova Group is a <clears throat> Uh, it was born from the merger of the two companies, uh, ESA and Attack Um Both companies are in, it in Italy and they're quite close to each other. And uh, ESA is uh, focused on the um, design and uh, manufacturing of portable testing equipment for substations, uh, such as transformer testing, uh, circuit breaker testing, CTPD testing, uh, overhead line testing, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, substation and transmission line testing equipment. And TechIMP is a um, major player for condition assessment and uh, permanent monitoring solutions for uh, all sorts of uh, power uh, assets. And TechIMP is expert, expertise in the uh, PD testing technologies. Uh, it was a spin off from University of Bologna and it has been grown for for the for the uh, last thirty years, um, so it's uh, it's a very famous brand in the PD world. And Intellisol is a new acquired company uh, located in Boston, uh, Massachusetts, in the U United States. And in, uh, Intellisol is uh, um, focusing on the temperature and the humidity monitoring. Um, they have a uh, unique system to monitor the temperature and the humidity with non-contact uh, temperature sensors. So these three companies form the Artinova group. And who TechMB is, uh, as I mentioned, TechMB is a leading company in advanced testing and monitoring solutions. So we we cover almost all the power apparatus, uh, medium voltage to high voltage, including the transformers, the cables from both medium voltage and high voltage, and uh, GIS, uh, switch gears, medium and high voltage switch gears, and motors and generators. As I mentioned, we are the experts in PD testing. Uh, we design and manufacture all the equipments and the sensors that we use for, uh, for, for our uh, testing services and also monitoring solutions. So um, this webinar, I have prepared those uh, contents that I like to share and discuss with you. Um, first, um, it's a little introduction, like uh, uh, what's the challenge in the wind farm and why why do we need to do the testing and the monitoring. And the second part is the foundation of our um, testing and, and monitoring solution. Um, of course, it's our uh, diagnostic technology. So I will give a brief overview uh, of our highlights in the diagnostic testing and you know, why this technology is unique and uh, effective. And uh, the last three parts are the um, the applications or the uh, the the services that we can we can uh, conduct or uh, that that's uh, important in the wind farms power systems. So uh, the first part is the commissioning task, mainly for the medium voltage cable systems. And the second part is the maintenance test. Uh, once the the, um, the wind farms are installed, we need to ensure the reliability of all the assets, like uh, cables, switch gears, and transformers. We need to ensure them uh, the, the performance are good and they do not experience premature failure. So that's in the maintenance test. And condition monitoring um, is the extension of the maintenance test. So instead of uh, doing the test, 
like once a year or uh, once every other year, uh, condition monitoring will uh, keep an eye on the equipment at all time and uh, raise the alarm or uh, send the alert to the, the operators once uh, there's any um, uh, indication of agent or, or de uh, degradation. So those are the um, the main contents in this webinar. So let's get started. Um, so wind farms, wind uh, or wind powers in the recent uh, thirty years or forty years, uh, there's a a uh, souring of uh, wind uh, wind powers. Uh, as you can see in the chart here, um, the wind wind power installation um, in the recent uh, thirty years it's uh, increasing exp exponentially. Um, so the increased rate from previous years uh, is average about 10%. Uh, uh, if, if we're talking about from uh, 1990s to uh, 2010, the increased rate is about 15% or even higher. So in the recent uh, three to four years, uh, the increased rate is a little bit slower, but still it's around 10% uh, increase every year. And uh, also in the last 10 years, more than half of the new wind farm, uh, wind, wind power installation was, uh, was in China and the USA. Um, uh, the other area like India, uh, Germany, uh, Spain, UK, those are also the, uh, the big players in the wind farm. Um, in some areas, uh, the wind farm, the, the wind power generation takes over, uh, take over like 10% of the total power generation. Um, so this is a big market. And um, if, if, if we also look at the, the cumulate, Cumulative uh, installed wind farms, uh, it's also a huge number. So that uh, that apparently brings uh, two questions. So first, we need to ensure the quality of the newly installed apparatus, like uh, um, the cables, the uh, cable termination splices, yeah, the switch gears. Um, once they're installed, they, we need to ensure that they're, they're in a good, uh, good condition to, to start to work. And also for the, uh, the cumulative, uh, installed wind farms uh, after operating for 10, 20, 30 years, uh, uh, or when we change the ownership, we also want to ensure that uh, those apparatus are performing well, their function, their, their, their uh, operation conditions are, are good. So that brings the question that uh, we need to do the maintenance test and probably we should have the monitoring systems to to watch the operating condition of those apparatus. So, um, so in, in order to uh, ensure the performance of the wind farm and uh, to maintain the reliability of the uh, the power generation, uh, we need to understand what what are the common failures for the wind farm, and uh, um, so there, there is a gap. So there, there are different types of uh, um, cause to to the failure, but the the cause to the failure isn't equal to the downtime. So different cause of failure has different effect on the downtime. Here is a summary that uh, about 10% of the overall failures are due to the uh, power apparatus failures, such as transformer, cable, switch gear, and generator faults. And this 10% of uh, failure contributes to 40% of overall downtime. And apparently such downtime has a, a big a big impact on the, uh, the economy of the wind farm operations. And that is the reason that uh, we, need to, um, we need to do something to uh, prevent or to reduce such, uh, such failures. The common fault for the, uh, the typical apparatus, like uh, the cable transformer and the GIS or switch gears uh, are listed here. Um, I think those are sort of uh, um, common problems. I will not uh, read all of them, uh, but basically uh, it includes manufacturing or installation problems, which are probably over 50% of the uh, failures are caused by those two uh, reasons. And there are some other uh, reasons such as mechanical damage or overloading or corrosion and of course uh, agent or de uh, degradation. Those are also the, uh, the, the cause of uh, faults. 
So um, apparently, this this is the direct cost that required to uh, to to employ diagnostic diagnostic testing through the entire life cycle of this uh, equipment, um, so that we can we can ensure the operational safety and the economy of the wind farms. So um, the concept behind the assessment is uh, we should have a effective technology to figure out what's the condition and what's the uh, performance of those uh, equipment. Um, here are some uh, factors that we need to uh, figure out. For example, we should have a proper diagnostic markers to, uh, to, to discri discriminate the defects. The diagnostic markers are the measured parameters, such as temperature, humidity, voltage, current, capacitance, uh, those kind of things. And of course, uh, when we are doing the diagnostic testing, we're talking about uh, something like uh, dielectric loss or partial discharge. And uh, um, our Sam uh, webinar here, we are mainly focused on the partial discharge diagnosis. Um, but we will also cover the other technologies or diagnostic markers, such as the, the dissolved gas analysis or um, dielectric loss or the change of capacitance um, in specific applications, such as for transformers. Um, and also, uh, one, once we have those diagnostic markers, we, we need to figure out uh, the agent factors in organic materials. Like uh, if we see partial discharge, what does it mean? How do we uh, how do we get the result from the PD measurement? And how, how do we determine which is the fastest agent mechanism? And how do we know what is the most harmful cause of breakdown? So all those informations needs to be combined together to derive the, the final answer, telling the user what's the risk and what are the, um, the actions that the user needs to take. So that's the brief introduction. Um, so the wind farm, the challenge in the wind farm, and why do we need to employ the diagnostic testing technologies? And uh, here I'm, I'm going to uh, give a brief overview of uh, the PD diagnostic technology, uh, and especially the, the PD diagnostic technology that uh, TechInv employs. So uh, a brief overview of, uh, of, of, of a general, very general PD diagnostic technology. What's the reason that uh, P, uh, people select PD testing instead of the other testing technology? I mean, even if, if we're talking about cables or switch gears, there are tons of uh, diagnostic te testing technologies that's available. What's the uniqueness of partial discharge testing? So uh, here are the three major advantages of using PD testing. First, PD testing is a non-destructive testing technology. Um, we a, a principle of uh, diagnostic testing is uh, we do not damage the equipment on the test. So uh, PD is a non-destructive testing. Uh, it will not reduce the, the the service life, effective service life of life of the equipment on the test. And the second uh, uniqueness of uh, PD testing: um, PD testing can recognize the type of defects um, instead. Uh, Compared with the, some other testing technologies, um, I always use uh, um, temperature or, or dielectric loss as an example. Uh, dielectric loss, it can measure a single value for a equipment. So that gives a overall performance of that equipment, but it cannot tell uh, what type of defect we're looking at. Or it cannot tell which component in that system. Uh, if we're testing a cable, we, we don't know where exactly the defect or the weak spot is uh, with the, the dielectric loss measurement. But PD test, uh, first we can recognize what type of defect we're talking about. Um, it, is it uh, a surface discharge or is it uh, just a corona discharge of, of a, a needle electrode or is it a uh, void discharge inside of the insulation? So, so PD test, um, it can recognize the type of defects and another advantage of PD test is that it can locate the source of defects. So again, uh, the dielectric loss, uh, it's very effective to tell the overall performance of a cable system, but it cannot distinguish, um, for example, if, if I have a large water tree 
or uh, an other cable, I have uh, thousands of uh, small water trees. Uh, the 10 delta value will be the same. Um, I cannot differenti differentiate these two uh, scenarios. PD test, um, the benefit of using PD test is uh, um, if, there's, if there are multiple discharge activities, we can recognize them. We can do the analysis on each individual uh, defects and, and the performed evaluation or perform the, uh, the training analysis for each individual defects. Uh, therefore, we can give a specific uh, suggestions or action items on each individual defects. So this is a great advantage of using partial discharge testing technology. So uh, we talk about advantage and the challenge, or what's what what are the reasons that stopping people employing the uh, partial discharge, or what's the 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 reason that uh, um, stopping PD getting so popular? Um, so there are some challenges that uh, um, we need to we need to handle when we are uh, selecting or using partial discharge testing. So first is uh, um, we need to make sure that uh, the signal that we measure these partial discharge signals are um, the, the problem of the, the field test is there are lots of noise or interference on site. So the first problem is uh, how can we ensure that uh, the measured signal with a device is PD signal or is the interested, interested PD signals. Um, I saw a lot of uh, handheld devices, uh, handheld PD testing devices, they give a red light or give a number indicating that uh, there are something. So uh, my first question is always, um, what am I looking at? Uh, am I sure this is the PD signals or is it just a, a walkie-talkie or is it just a, a motor starting or is it just a, some other transient? So this is the first challenge that we, we need to recognize what type of uh, signals we're looking at. And we need to recognize the PD signals and distinguish it away from all sorts of uh, interference. And even if the detected signals are PD signals, we need to recognize whether the PD signals is within the system or it's uh, coming from such as overhead lines or the, uh, the insulators that, uh, that that's in the substation. So, so that, that's the first challenge. The second challenge is um, when we do the PD test and when we, we are trying to make sense, get, get the value from the PD test, uh, we always want to know um, what, 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 what is good, what is bad. And such as the leakage current test, um, apparently if leakage current is higher than a third, certain threshold value, um, that equipment is not in a good condition. PD test, we, we are trying to use the same criteria, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't work. There's no single threat, threshold value to present the diagnostic result. We cannot say um, this equipment with uh, 100 millivolt discharge or 50 picocoulomb discharge is bad, or that device with uh, 20 picocoulomb discharge is good. So the, the testing result is more complicated than the other testing technologies. We're gonna talk about a, a little bit the details on that. Um, the reason of, of uh, we cannot use a single threshold value to present the result is um, the PD severity is determined by um, various factors. So uh, very important factor first, uh, what type of discharge we're talking about. Um, if, we're talk if we're comparing the corona discharge, which is external to the, um, the equipment on the test, um, to the, and, and the, uh, the internal cavity discharge within the insulation systems, apparently if the corona discharge is huge, like a few volts or uh, thousands of picocoulomb, it does not do too much of damage to the to the insulation system. So probably it's very safe to operate under uh, thousands of picocolon of uh, corona discharge. Um, in contrast, um, the, the cavity discharge uh, is within the organic insulation material. Even if we have a few millivolt of uh, cavity discharge or tens of picocolons of uh, cavity discharge, it's still very dangerous to the, to the insulation system. 
So that that explains we cannot just use a magnitude to come uh, to 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 judge whether the equipment is good or bad. We need to employ uh, what type of discharge we're talking about, um, where the discharge site is, um, what's the tolerance of the equipment for PD. Um, if we're motor is a great example, right? Um, if we're talking about a mica installation or the organic installation. Mica insulation has has a much larger tolerance on the, uh, the PD uh, PD activities, but uh, the organic insulation um, the tolerance on PD is is not not even close. So the, uh, that that brings the last uh, challenge. Uh, the testing result is complicated. It requires experience. It requires a thorough analysis to derive the 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 uh, useful information. So. Um, so normally, if we're talking about uh, the PD analysis, uh, we can uh, divide the analysis process into three steps, separation, identification, and diagnosis. Um, I'm not going to spend uh, uh, one hour to talk about those, also um, uh, the details require a lot of uh, explanation, but um, still, let's stay on the general overview on these uh, steps. So uh, signal separation, uh, apparently this is the noise injection, and also we need to separate uh, PD signals from different sources. Um, before we talk about uh, the signal separation, we need to know what signal we're looking at, what's, uh, what parameters do we save for the PD signals that we acquire. Um, in most of the PD testing systems, um, the signals that has been acquired would be the PD magnitude, uh, the Q max or, or Q mean or the phase angle, um, these are the two typical parameters that uh, almost all the PD testing systems will, will acquire. Um, with the, the tech and PD testing technologies, we have two additional, um, actually three additional parameters that we, uh, we, we, we save all the time, which is the equivalent pulse uh, equivalent time width or equivalent pause width. Just imagine that uh, we have a, a, a short pause in the time domain and the pause width is in the in the range of a few uh, microsecond or hundreds of a nanosecond. So that's the, the pause width. <clears throat> the equivalent pause bandwidth, um, so corresponding to the pause width, if we do the Fourier transform, then we can calculate the bandwidth. So those two, uh, those two values are correlated, and those two values can be used to um, represent a represent a pause. <clears throat> and uh, the the fifth parameter is the uh, pause, uh, the PD pause time interval, which is the time difference to the previous PD pause. Uh, that will be very useful for the DC PD testing and maybe some other uh, testing scenarios. So with those parameters, uh, how do we use them? Why we save those parameters? Uh, phase result pattern, this is a very uh, classic PD diagnostic or uh, analysis tools um, as, as, as it's shown here. Uh, the phase result pattern, it's using the first two parameters, the magnitude and the phase angle. Um, or the acquired PD pause, it's presented by a dot in this chart. So, so here each dot is one pulse uh, with the pulse magnitude and the phase angle relative to the, um, the power frequency. So um, the reason of having the phase result pattern is uh, um, apparently we can see some clusters or distributions of the, the, the pulses. And this cluster or distribution is an indicator of the defects. So uh, the PRPD pattern or phase result pattern is a classic tool to recognize the type of defect with the PD testing technology. So very uh, powerful, very classic, has been heavily studied in the recent uh, 30 years. Uh, I think that's a mature technology. Um, lots of uh, testing companies will use that. Um, it's a very genetic one. And uh, the uniqueness of uh, tracking technology is uh, we have the TF map. Um, TF map used the, the third and the fourth parameter to represent the, the acquired signals as is shown here. Um, so the, the idea is um, each pause, the, the PD pause from the same source tend to have similar shape. Um, 
apparently because it's the same source and uh, it goes through the same path to reach the sensor. So the pulse shape will be quite similar. And uh, remember the two parameters, the time width and the bandwidth, uh, the representative of the pulse shape. So uh, once we plot the pot, the pulses by the time within the time the, the bandwidth, the PD signals from the same source tend to be clustered together. It will form groups. It will it will generate uh, different groups. So with the TF map, uh, we can distinguish signals from different sources. So this is our unique technology to do the signal separation, and. Uh, then the further analysis can be performed for each uh, cluster of signals. So let me show some examples. Signal separation uh, with the TF map. Um, this is the overall uh, phase result pattern of a field acquired data. Um, apparently here there are a lot of uh, noises. Uh, those those dots. Thoughts. Uh, it's very uh, periodic, uh, very good pattern. That's a typical uh, switching noise from variable speed drive, which is very common in the wind farm or uh, in the uh, the other motors and the generators. Um, in this chart, it's almost impossible to see what uh, whether we have PD signals or not. Um, however, if we look at the TF map, um, so the connection between these two charts, each individual dot in the phase result pattern has a corresponding dot in the TF map. So those are the um, the the um, the mapping or the, the the mirroring of the two uh, of the signals in in the two charts. And apparently in the TF map, the signals were separated into groups, so that uh, it enables us to do the analysis on each group. And uh, that requires the the, uh, the analyst or the engineers to do the analysis on each, each individual group. And after the analysis, we separate uh, the signals into uh, three clusters. Also, we have four groups, but uh, uh, we figured out uh, that uh, two groups are belong to the same clusters. So here are the three clusters of signals. So the black group, the signals are uh, the signals are look like this. Uh, those are the, the, the switching noise from the variable speed drives. And the blue group, uh, we can see it has a unique pattern around here. And uh, uh, later on, we will we'll talk about uh, uh, how do we recognize the, 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 uh, the type of discharge or the type of defects from the phase result patterns. So uh, it was recognized this is surface discharge. And also the the, the the red group red group is another type of discharge which is uh, which is different from the blue clusters uh, the phase angle is different the PD pattern is a little bit different it has a little bit uh, um, uh, rise on the edge um, we we call it rabbit ear so it, it, it is a typical uh, internal discharge so uh, a short summary with the TF map we can uh, separate different clusters uh, in the phase result pattern and then we can do the analysis for each individual classes. So um, two, two uh, advantage here. So first we can recognize what type of signal is noise, what type of signals are PD signals. And the second, even even if we are dealing with multiple PD sources with TF map, we can recognize uh, PD signals from different sources. And uh, the third advantage is here. Um, even though the noise are very high in some applications, as, a, as we mentioned at the beginning, a uh, big challenge of PD testing is to remove the noise. Um, there are huge noise around here, and uh, we cannot see any discharge signals without proper filtering. Um, so with the TF map analysis, we can split the signals into two parts and only focus on the, uh, the, the, the groups that present in the PD signals. So this is the, uh, the third advantage that uh, we can use the TF map as a filtering technology to improve the testing sensitivity. So we can discover the PD signals below the noise level. So, so here is 
uh, here is a little summary about uh, uh, the PD signal separation, uh, especially the technology advantage that we use TFMAP to separate the signals from different sources and to recognize signals from uh, um, uh, different sources. And uh, PD source identification, identification, uh, I think that's a uh, another big advantage. Um, ad signal identification includes two parts. First part is to recognize the type of discharge. So this part is uh, is performed with the phase result pattern. Um, as we mentioned before, um, different signals will have different phase result pattern. Um, so here are some examples. Uh, the first column is the corona discharge. Um, it has different uh, uh, shape of the distribution, um, but it also has its uh, uh, common factors like uh, it's asymmetric, it focuses on the uh, 27 degrees and it's flat. Uh, the second column is the surface discharge, um, the third column is the, uh, the internal discharge. So the surface and the internal discharge are also, we can we can distinguish them by the, the shape of the distribution, whether the the peak of the distribution is smooth, or uh, it follows the the, uh, the voltage waveform, or the surface discharge, the, the peak is uh, scattered a lot, and uh, it doesn't go beyond the zero crossing while the internal discharge goes beyond the internal crossing. So um, all those, um, it, it will take a long time to, to explain the reason why the uh, different defects will have different uh, phase result pattern. In general, um, this recognition heavily relies on the experience, the training the the, the operator has. Um, each service provider or the equipment provider should have a library of the phase result pattern as a reference. So the operator should be able to refer to the library to see what type of defect we're looking at. Um, one note here is um, for different equipment or different apparatus, the phase result pattern will have its uh, unique uh, features. For example, if we're talking about a GIS or if we're talking about a motor transformers, um, the phase result pattern will be quite different. Motor discharge, uh, there, there will be a lot of uh, uh, sub patterns. Um, for example, in our database, we will include uh, eight sub typical sub patterns for motor and the generators and uh, for GIS I believe we have four or five sub patterns and for transformers we have seven sub patterns so those are all the um, the side topic uh, requires requires a lot of uh, experience and knowledge to recognize the type of uh, defects and another um, another identification is to locate where the discharge source come from so here are the four typical location method that uh, uh, we can use. Uh, it's, it's from very simple to a little bit more challenging method. So very simple method is to, 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 to use the polarity analysis to locate uh, where the discharge comes from. So for example, if we have a sensor installed in the middle of a, a cable, uh, for example, on a cable splice, um, the, the measured PD pulse, the current pulse, it has directions, right? So we can use the direction or use the polarity of the pulse to tell if this signal is coming from the left part or it's from the right part. Um, the same thing happens if we have the sensor installed at the cable termination. Um, so if the signal coming from the part above the termination, uh, it will have uh, positive polarity. If the signal comes from uh, the equipment below the termination, like the cables or splices, it will have negative polarity. So that's a simple uh, uh, judgment rule to 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 locate uh, roughly where the signal comes from. And the second is a magnitude comparison. Apparently, PD magnitude is higher when the sensor is closer to the source. Uh, that requires multiple sampling. A typical example is uh, if we have uh, a row of uh, switchgear cubicles and uh, you know there are a lot of cross-talking when we test in the cubicles. So the best practice is to test all of them and find the, 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 the panel with the highest magnitude and most likely that's the PD source. And uh, the last two, two methods are a little bit um, more complicated. Uh, frequency domain localization, it depends 
it uses uh, the, the bandwidth to, to check where the signal comes from. Uh, using a cable as an example, as we shown here, the signal bandwidth, the PD signal bandwidth at the initial, it's a very high uh, ultra wide band signal. Uh, the bandwidth is up, is higher than hundreds of megahertz or even gigahertz range. So after a certain distance of propagation, the, the bandwidth will decrease. And uh, with, the, with the measured bandwidth, we can roughly estimate uh, where the PD source is. And the last part is the so-called time domain uh, localization or time of, time of arrival analysis. Basically, it's uh, using the reflection of the PD signals to, to see where the source is. So um, this localization method, uh, there are a lot of publications talking about that. And uh, if you are interested in, uh, please send me, send me a message. I can show you some references. Uh, I think we are running out of time here. Uh, diagnosis, I will not to talk too much. Uh, so diagnosis is the, the most important but most challenging part. Um, so just the two methods. Uh, traditional diagnos diag diagnostic method, um, they do not give uh, the final conclusion, just give the measured results, the numerical measured results. So this method, uh, very simple. Uh, all the value can be read from the equipment, but uh, it doesn't give the operator information what we need to do. What does it mean? So the customized indicator, uh, like uh, the three-level indicator or some other level indicators, um, it does not directly report the, the measured parameters like the PD magnitude or uh, the other values. It uh, gives red, uh, yellow, green, or level one, two, three, four, five, those level systems to evaluate the severity of the, uh, the installation condition. And uh, this level system will also give the actionable items, like what, what we need to do. Um, here's an example of a five level system that uh, we use for the, uh, the medium voltage cable testing uh, or the evaluation. So from level one is, is the best condition, uh, no degradation, no action need. And level five, uh, the component is going to fail in a very short time. We need to take uh, action immediately. And uh, level two, three, four are in the middle. Um, so with the level system, the customer can pr prioritize the maintenance plan and uh, can take actions based on the uh, priorities. So this is a uh, quite uh, unique and um, um, uh, helpful information for the clients.